And now let's talk about iPad mini. I don't remember very well now, but I had an iPad mini 4 or 5 at some point. Since I barely used it, I traded in for the 6th generation iPad Pro. Not long after, Apple released the M2 iPad Pro with the hover function, and that's the one I have now. The thing with Apple product is, sometimes I just want one whether I actually need it or not. I started to want the iPad mini again. But even with discounts at Costco and deals during Amazon Prime Day, I hesitated because the next generation was rumored to be coming out soon. I was also debating between the 11-inch Pro and the Mini, but I decided to wait until the new Mini came out to make my choice. Then, without any major announcement, the new iPad Mini was suddenly released, called the Mini A17, not the Mini 7. I briefly considered getting the discounted Mini 6, but the price difference wasn't that big. I ended up pre-ordering the new Mini. I could never get comfortable writing or drawing on the iPad glass with the Apple Pencil and ended up barely using the pencil. So this time, I bought paper-like to make the screen feel more like paper. I figured the best time to apply it would be when I first unboxed the iPad. I waited for paper-like to arrive before setting it up. A side one that's a side that goes down, and the side two is the one that goes one. up so that they stick to the table. And then push the iPad, these two round stickers on the front, a handle, right? We'll be using it to open this this way. We should pick up all the dust specks that might have collected or that wear. And this is a very important stage. You want to make sure that you have the least amount close to the iPad. There are a couple of big bubbles, and what we want to do now. You do this, and then you push out any remaining bubbles, and voila, we have a perfectly applied paper leg. Blue and purple were tempting new colors, but I went with the boring space gray because I wanted a white smart case. Since the exterior size is same as the 6, I found a new one for a great deal on eBay. I was curious why Apple let the old case still fit, but of course, I couldn't use the Pencil 2 with new iPad. After way too many times searching around the house for my Pencil, I also decided to get the Pencil Pro, justifying it with the Find My feature and the nice haptic feedback I tried in the store. The white case might be harder to keep clean, but I liked how well it matched with the pencil. I guess I'll need to keep my case in good shape. I don't want it ending up looking like my old Logitech mouse. I was initially considering the 128GB, but I went with 256GB based on how much storage I've used on my current iPad Pro. Once I finished setting it up, I noticed a few issues. The pencil wouldn't pair. So I had to do a network reset to get it working. In my experience, if something's glitchy from the start, it usually means more issues later. The pencil was fine in most apps, but wasn't recognized in Find My. And despite the rotation lock being off, the Kindle and Books apps wouldn't rotate.
closing either app fixed the rotation issue, but no matter how much I searched, I couldn't find a solution for find my not recognizing the pencil. Apple says exchanges are easy, but honestly, it felt like I'd be turning a brand new device into a used one, so I wasn't too excited about it. In the end though, I went back to the Apple store and swapped out my iPad and pencil. When I exchanged my iPad, I had to toss one of the paper-like films I'd already put on. Luckily, it came with two, so I just used the spare. After the exchange, the pencil worked perfectly. And the Kindle and Books app rotation issues were fixed with the 18.1 update. Writing with paper-like doesn't really feel like paper, just a bit less like glass. But I think that'll actually help the pencil tip wear out less. Instead of expecting it to feel like paper, I'm just enjoying the matte finish, and now I'm even tempted to put it on my iPad Pro too. There's something about Apple products that just makes you want to buy accessories for them. I got a bag for my mini, even though I barely go out. Maybe it's because I didn't come straight from the 6, so I don't have that direct comparison. Or maybe it's just the excitement of using something new. But I haven't noticed any issues with the 60Hz refresh rate. I also don't tend to scroll through pages super fast or slow, so I haven't noticed any jelly scroll issues. What I did notice though, is that the battery drains a bit quicker than Pro. Probably because of the size difference, so I'd rather not lose more battery life with promotion. I didn't get the new mini just for Apple intelligence, but it's a nice bonus this model includes it along with support for the Pencil Pro. Apple intelligence is still pretty new, and I'm not expecting to do anything major with it, but it's exciting to watch it evolve. And honestly, there's just something satisfying about the Bling Bling Siri. Now that I have the Mini, I've thought about selling the Pro. But one of my reasons for keeping it is that the Pro is just more comfortable to use when I'm watching something on the iPad before bed. The Pro's super heavy keyboard actually make it easy to prop up sideways on the bed while the Mini just isn't as sturdy and tends to tip over even when lying flat. With new products coming out and Black Friday right around the corner, I really need to keep it together. Getting good stuff at a good price is exciting, but it can also be a bit stressful. The iPad Pro's got all the power, but I keep reaching for the Mini because it just feels right in my hand. And who knows? It might be another 3 years before the next one comes out. But until then, I think this mini and I will get along just fine. <laughs>